Church, lift your hands right now and just begin. Come on, just begin to tell him how great he is. Begin to share with the Lord how wonderful he is, his mercy, his grace, his kindness for you, his love that never fails. Hallelujah. Oh God, we praise you this morning. We magnify you, oh great God, over all the earth. There is no God like Jehovah. You're the one true God. You're the Alpha and Omega. You're the great I Am. You're the Prince of Peace. Oh, you're the Holy One. We bless you, Father. Oh, we cry out. God, we cry out to you. We cry out to Jesus. Come, Lord. Come, Jesus. Oh, Lord, fill our hearts today. Fill our lives with your presence, oh God. Give us a heart of praise. Oh, Father, we honor you. We thank you. Holy, holy, holy Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord. Father, I ask you right now to open every heart, open every ear to hear the word. God, open my lips to speak the truth. To speak your word, God, as I ought to speak it. And I ask, Lord God, that as we hear your word, we will not be hearers only, but that we will decide to become doers of the word of God. Now, Father, I bless your word. It is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Your word is sharper than any two-edged sword. God, let your word penetrate our hearts today with truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we'll never be the same again, Father, because of your word. And we'll never be the same again because of your promises, which are yes and amen. And Father, for that, we give you all the glory, we give you all the praise, and we give you all the honor, for you are worthy in Jesus' name. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Come on, let's bless the Lord. Holy, 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 holy. You are worthy, Lord. You have your Bible this morning, turn to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter number 4. I want to talk to you a little bit this morning about friction. We're going to talk a little bit this morning about friction. And uh, I'm honored today to preach this message from a very, very special Bible. This was my mother's Bible uh, who went to be with the Lord and and uh, is in now the presence of God. I'm so thankful that she is at peace with her Lord and Maker. Uh, But years ago, I gave this Bible to my mom because her eyes were getting to the point where she couldn't read the small print on her Bible, so I bought her a large print Bible, and and she's had it for many years. And so I'm honored today to preach this message from her Bible in memory of my mother who was 80 years old when she went to be with Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as was stated in the bulletin, I want to say thank you to uh, those of you and the whole church for your compassion and your comfort during this time of loss. We appreciate it greatly. One of the things I believe God is after in our lives is progression. Everybody say progression. God wants you to progress in your faith. You know, wherever you work, it's probably the implication of your boss or the company you work for that they want you to progress. Most people do not want you to digress or to fall back, but people want you to go forward in anything that you do. We want to go forward in our knowledge of Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? We want to know him more. The Apostle Paul, after knowing him for years, said in the latter years of his life, I want to know him in the power of his resurrection, as if he hadn't already known him. But Paul was interested in progressing in his faith. And I believe that you and I need to be interested in progressing in the things of God, in the things of the kingdom. That's why our 2013 theme is Faith Forward. I believe God wants you to progress in your faith. Can you say amen? He wants you to progress in the areas of your life that he's gifted you. And that's why here at Life Church, 
We don't let you sit soak and sour. At Life Church, we believe you need to get involved. You need to use your talents for God. You need to get active and do something with what God's given you. Otherwise, it's going to grow stale in your life, and then things that, that were called fruit are now going to fall off the limb. But we want to believe, God, that you are equipped and ready to do every good work that God has designed for you to do. And so we progress forward. Just as we have now launched Joey and Amanda into a brand new ministry, we had to raise some somebody up to fill their spot. Pastor Travis will soon be the senior pastor of Life Church Magnolia. That sounds funny, doesn't it? <laughs> but I am so excited because Travis and Pamela both are incredible leaders who have been faithful, who have been humble, who have been broken by God, who have uh, been appointed to this ministry, and who have been absolute servants. And so I believe that God is raising them up because they are progressing. Hallelujah. Michelle and I are honored and we're, we're blessed to the promotion that God's bringing us to be pastoring a church in Slidell, uh, Louisiana. That's a progression for us. We're moving forward. And as we move forward, and as Pastor Travis and Pamela move forward, the people of Life Church are all stepping up and moving forward because we are progressing in our faith. Hallelujah. We sure don't want to go backwards. We don't want to go sideways. We don't want to stand still. We want to take ground. And we are taking ground. Can you say amen? And in the midst of that taking ground, and in the midst of that progression, there will always be friction. Now, you have to know this because this is what they usually don't tell you. When you order the Big Mac and the fries and the large Coke and they say, do you want to supersize it? They're not going to tell you that that's going to create more friction around your waistline. Mm. It'll be more to carry around. There'll be more weight. They're not going to, they want you to have that. But let me tell you, God wants you to go forward, but you need to know there's going to be friction going forward. You need to know that there's going to be opposition. You need to know that, that all hell may break loose against you. But greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. But you need to know this because as you progress and move forward, you will have an enemy that will want to stop you in your tracks. He doesn't want you going forward. He doesn't want you taking ground. He doesn't want to lose what he's done. But to God be the glory, we're moving forward. Can you say amen? And in the midst of our forward motion, there's going to be friction. There's going to be seasons and times where we're going to be rubbing up against the wrong thing. And things are going to be tight and frustrating. And things are going to be difficult. But that's all a part of friction. And I'm here to tell you, friction is not a bad thing. Progression can be defined by movement or development toward a destination or a more advanced state. That's where we're going. We're going to a more advanced state. Hallelujah. Now, I don't mean me and Michelle going to a more advanced state in Louisiana. <laughs> I don't think they wear shoes there, but anyway. <laughs> but all of us are going toward a more advanced state in our faith. Listen, I'm thankful to God that I am not as strong as I'm going to be a year from now, but I praise God I'm twice as strong as I was a year ago. Hallelujah, because I'm taking ground and I'm moving forward. I'm not backing up. Hallelujah. I'm not backing up. My back's not against the wall. I have options in Jesus. I have, I have a wide space he's bringing me to. Hallelujah. You see, the destination is the will of God, and eventually it's heaven. God is on the move, and we are constantly moving from faith to faith, from strength to strength, and from glory to glory. That's where we're going, church. We're moving forward. We're taking ground. We're progressing. Listen, there are many, many denominations in themselves, but churches at large all around you, you can look and see that they are shrinking. Denominations are falling apart, and I'm telling you, we're just a generation away from Christianity in this nation from being extinct. Because not everybody has the attitude of moving forward. What, do you know that our forefathers are turning over in their graves because they're ordaining gay and homosexual ministers? That they're allowing same-sex marriage? It's not like that in the Word of God. That's an abomination, my friend. There are some that they have quit moving forward. They have decided they're not even moving backwards. They're out of the race altogether. But I'm telling you, God didn't call you to sit on the sideline. God didn't call you to drop out of the race. God called you to run your race. 
and run it well. And God expects you to keep moving forward until you hear those words, well done, good and faithful servant. That's your finish line. You're not stopping anywhere on this earth until you hear those words in glory. You keep running. You keep putting your face to the, to the plow. You keep moving forward. Don't ever look back. Jesus said anyone who takes his hands and puts them on the plow and looks back is not fit for service in the kingdom of God. There's nothing behind you, friend. There, there's no armor on your backside. You're only supposed to advance forward. You're supposed to take ground. You're supposed to go ahead, and that's why the armor's on the front and not the back. We don't have reverse, can you say amen? We don't even have neutral, hallelujah. But we got drive, and we got other gears we're going to move into because God wants us to go forward. But I'm telling you, as we move forward, we are going to have some friction. Well, let's look at what that means if that's the case. Well, it means the force resisting the relative motion of solid surfaces, fluid layers, and material elements sliding against each other. This is the clash of good and evil. This is the clash of the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness. If we're going to keep moving forward, we're going to continually be, be, be coming up against these different layers. We're going to be coming up against these different elements, and we're going to be bombarding them, and there's going to be friction, and there's going to be a struggle one against the other. Is static friction is when the friction is strong enough to stop the movement between two objects. Sadly, I can tell you this morning, there are people all over this city, this small city of Magnolia, Arkansas, who are in their armchair or in their couch or in their bed this morning because the friction was strong enough to stop their walk with Christ. Tragic. But there are people all over this city who have decided following Jesus is not worth it. It's too much work. It's too difficult. Every time I take a step forward, I get knocked too back. Let me help you, friend. That's called friction. And that's going to happen. You're going to fight against the forces of darkness. But as I said earlier, the one who's in you is greater. Static friction is, it represents so many people that, that face the same thing you and I do, but they dropped out of the race because the friction was strong enough to stop them. I'm going to ask you something, friend. Is the friction strong enough to stop you? See, the wind's going to blow, and it gets stronger, and there are times when you feel like you can't go any further, but thank God because the wind subsides. Hallelujah. It won't always be windy, but there will be a time where God will give you an opportunity to advance, but you've got to be standing there when that opportunity comes. Now, the great kind is kinetic friction is when the frictional force is not strong enough to stop all motion. Can I tell you this morning, the friction that we face around us today is not strong enough to stop life, church. It's not strong enough to stop you. Greater are you. You have more. There are more for you than there are against you. If God is for you, who can be against you? Hallelujah. The, the static, the kinetic friction around us is not strong enough to stop you. It, it only is strong enough if you allow it to. But I'm here to tell you today that through the word of God and through your relationship with the King of Kings, there will never be a friction that's in this world that will stop you from moving forward in your faith. Now, I know this, that friction causes motion. Friction causes motion. Many times, as you saw the picture in my first slide, striking a match across that, that surface, there's a motion there, and it's creating an energy, and all of a sudden you have fire because of friction, where you don't have fire without it. I'm going to tell you something. I got a fire shut up in my bones, but it didn't get there through playing hopscotch. It didn't get there through just meditating. That fire got in my spirit because there's been friction in my life. That fire comes into your spirit when you have been enduring difficulties and fighting against the powers and the principalities of darkness. And you did what Ephesians 6 said. It says when you've done all, you just stand. Hallelujah. Because even if you just stand, you're greater than the forces around you because the one that's in you gives you power to stand. Hallelujah. You're not backing up. You're not falling down. You're not jumping out. You're just standing. Even standing, you're winning. Mm. Even 
standing still, you're still taking ground because you haven't backed up and you haven't quit and you haven't thrown in the towel and you haven't run away. You're just standing and letting the wind beat on your face because all the armor that you have, nothing's going to penetrate it. And the shield that you have is taking care of all the fiery darts of the enemy. And the word that you're reading while you're standing there is giving you power to stand. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Friction causes motion, friend. We're going to go forward not in spite of friction, but because of friction. We're, everything the devil's trying to do to stop us is making us go forward. Hallelujah. Everything he's throwing at us is only making us stronger and more determined to finish the race. Friction causes motion. And you know why most churches fall asleep and why they shut their doors? is because there's no friction. You know what they do? They sit back in the pew and they don't do nothing. You want to get comfortable? You want to sit in a pew and do nothing? You're going to die. You want to go forward, there's going to be friction. Listen, we minister to, how old is uh, our neighbor over here on College View? It's, 89 years old. We minister to a lady who's 89. I see her out here. I saw her out here this morning as I was coming to church. Her, she's out in her yard all the time. She's 89 years old. And, and, and we, we, she's actually let us help her a little bit, but I talked to her one day, and she said, this is what's keeping me alive. She could go in in her little house, and she could sit down in her little chair or in her little bed, and she could shrivel up, and she could die. Or she could get outside and get on her hands and knees and pick the weeds out of her flower beds. And she can, she can take care of those flowers and she can trim her trees and she can work in her yard. She can, and, and because of that friction that she does, that causes more motion for her. It, she said, it's keeping me alive, Pastor. That's why I'm out in my yard every day. It's keeping me alive. Because that friction is creating some motion inside of me. And that is keeping her strong. And I'm telling you, church, as long as we are faithful to do the work of the kingdom, there's going to be friction, but there's also going to be motion. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's not time to fold up our hands. It's not time to shut the Bible. It's time to wake up, rise up, go forward, take ground, and see the kingdom of God advance. Can you say amen? See, there's a, an issue of rubbing. How many of you have somebody that just rubs you the wrong way? Come on, it's all right. How many of it's, they're sitting next to you? Put your hand down. There's people that rub you the wrong way. You know that God places some of those people in your life? Mm. Yeah, because God's trying to do something in you, and he's trying to do something through you, and God will allow things in your life that rub you the wrong way because God wants to see how you're going to respond to it. Anybody can throw a fit! Anybody can have a pity party. Mm -hmm. Anybody, anybody can murmur and complain. But God's looking for the one that says, devil, is that all you got? The story was told, I think it was John Wesley. I'm not certain of who the great lit man of God was, but let's just say it was John Wesley. The story is told he was sleeping in his bed, sound asleep one night. Heard a noise in his room and he woke up. And there on the end of his bed was sitting Satan. And he looked at him and he said, oh, it's just you. And he went back to sleep. You see, God wants to know how you're going to respond to the things that happen in your life. It's not what happens to you. It's what, how you respond to what happens to you. You see, and some things are going to rub you the wrong way. That's friction. There are things that are going to resist you like sandpaper. There are things in your life that are going to be resistant to you. There are things that are not going to come easy to you. There are things that are going to be difficult and they're going to just rub you like sandpaper. There's sometimes you have to choke down a word that God speaks to you that you need to hear whether you want to hear it or not. You need to hear sometimes what your parents are saying to you. And as your parents discipline you, the Word of God says, God disciplines those He accepts as a child. 
Nobody likes it, but there's times where we need to hear the word from God that causes us to say, oh my God, this is like sandpaper. But you got to hear that word in order for God to smooth out the rough places in your life. Can you say amen? Listen, we all need to hear those tough things from time to time. Don't run from it, friend. It may be friction to you right now, but God is working something in you far greater than you just have to let it take its course. Do you know how a pearl gets to be a pearl? Sitting inside that shell, sand rubbing against it all the time, grit and grime rubbing against that thing, and it over the course of time, all that grit and all that sand rubbing makes a beautiful pearl. It's soft and shiny because of all the resistance that it endured. You see, that's you, friend. That's the end product of you after God allows the sand of time to resist you and to rub against you and to scrape you and to come into contact with you. All of that is creating a pearl on the inside. Some of the roughest people I know on the outside are some of the sweetest people on the inside. They've been through some storms in life, but God has tempered their spirit. Hallelujah. It's not on the outside that matters most, my friend. It's what's going on on the inside. Can you say amen? So there's a resistance that's going to take place every time we want to take ground. And then it's like a conflict, the clash of wills. The Bible says in, in Galatians 6 that there is a battle going on between our flesh and our spirit. It's a constant battle because our flesh doesn't want to serve God. Has anybody figured that out yet? Is it still working? Is it just me that, that you don't always want to worship God? Hello? Is there anybody in here that doesn't always want to come to church? They're, it's too religious still. They won't admit it. They're all saying, yeah. Listen, there's a conflict going on inside of us because our old nature keeps trying to win. Our old nature keeps trying to fight against the Spirit of God. We know, listen, we know what the Spirit of God wants to do in our lives. Pastor Travis and I were in the office this week, and a person came in and was needing help, and we tried to explain to him. I said, sir... You know, one of the things that we're trying to teach people here at Life Church is this. We will help in certain situations, but, but listen, if we just gave money to everybody that came in, we're not teaching them anything. We're just helping them to stay broke, busted, and disgusted. And the guy looked at me and he said, that's called enablement. We know. We know. They know when they're coming. In. They, they, don't just, they don't want to go get a job. They, don't want to, they just want me to help them. They don't want to deal with it. See, that's the conflict that's going on in our lives is that we know the right we ought to do, but we just don't want to do it. If we would admit to ourselves, we're just dog lazy. We're not disciplined enough to study the Word, to show ourselves approved workmen of God, not ashamed who rightly divide the Word of truth. You want me to do that for you. Be a good time to put your feet back. See, we just, our flesh, I don't really want to give in everything. To, I don't really want to tithe. I'll tip God. I'll give when I can. But I'm not going to commit to 10% of my income every week. What? Don't expect to be blessed. Don't ask God. You're a thief. You're a thief. You're stealing from God. My God. You know, one day somebody, somebody took some money from the church and somebody said, oh, pastor, I'm sorry that they did. I said, look, don't, I'm not the one that needs help. The one that took the money from God is the one that needs the help here. He'll take care of me, but I'm worried about a person who can rob God and be okay with that. Mm. But we do it. We rob him of his time with us. We rob him of our devotion. We rob him of everything we are. We give some to God, but not all. When's the last time it was really a sacrifice of praise for you? See, what is it? It's a conflict of our wills. It's a friction that we have to decide, I'm going to serve God come hell or high water. I'm going to be everything he's called me to be. No matter the conflict, no matter the friction, no matter what, I'm going to serve him. And when we can realize that, 
we understand the friction is for our good. Can you say amen? It's only for our good because friction's causing motion. It's making us will to want God. Read through the Psalms and you see over and over again how David went through peril and hardship and difficulty being chased from Saul. It only caused motion in his life that he didn't run from God. He ran to God. Let's try something else. Friction is momentary. Thank God it doesn't last forever. Can you say amen? But we have friction in our lives. We have it. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, No temptation has seized you except what is common to man. Hallelujah. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. Somebody say amen. But when you are tempted, how many of you know that's going to happen? He will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What's God saying there? You're going to be tempted. There's going to be friction. But even when the friction comes, God makes a way. Hallelujah. Even when the enemy comes, God is making a way for you. Hebrews 12, 11. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful later on. However, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who've been trained by it. I'm telling you, sorrow may last for the night, friend, but joy comes in the morning. Hallelujah. There's a joy that comes in the midst of that friction. God supplies that joy, and his joy is everlasting. Can you say amen? All right. And the last scripture is Job 23:10. It says this, but he knows the way that I take. And when he has tested me, I will come forth as gold. Hallelujah. Job found something in the midst of the friction in his life. Job didn't only have the friction of losing his family, losing his livestock, losing everything. He had the friction of his wife telling him to curse God and die. He had the friction of his three friends who thought they were wise in counsel to tell him everything he shouldn't listen to. On and on and on, Job endured affliction after affliction, conflict, all this stuff. And Job said these words. He said, but he knows the way that I take, and when he's tested me, I'll come forth as gold. Wow. When all the friction of my life is stopped, I'll be a pearl. When God is finished with people harassing me, when he's finished testing and trying me, when he's finished with the winds and the storms in my life, I'm just going to come forth like gold. What an attitude. It's no wonder Job's second, the second half of his life was even greater than the first half of his life. And I don't know a whole lot of people that could compare with the first half of his life. But because he understood what friction was all about, he understood that friction was not designed to destroy him, but to make him greater, to bring him forth like gold. God prospered him twice as much as he did in the beginning. Wow. How many wants a double portion? Can you say amen? There's going to be some friction to come and get it. All right, I'm going to let you know on the way. Now, friction is a must. It's a must. Everybody say it's a must. It's going to happen. It's, going to, it's got to happen. Friction's got to happen in our lives. We've got, we got to understand this. We've got to understand it. James 1, 2 through 4 says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds. What James is saying is be happy when you have friction in your life. Because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance, and perseverance must finish its work so you can be mature and complete, lacking nothing. Romans 12, 12 says to be joyful in hope, patient in affliction. Somebody say, ouch. Faithful in prayer, because we're really not any of these all the time, are we? Are we always joyful in hope, or do we complain a little bit along the way? Joyful in, this is the answer to friction. When you're facing friction, Lord, I don't understand why I'm facing this financial battle. I have friction in my finances. Be, pay, be joyful in hope. Lord, I don't understand why there's friction in my home, why there's friction in my marriage. I got a sad, I got a sad report this week. One of my most in, wonderfully loved missionary couples that I endear so, so wonderfully got a word from them that there's friction in their marriage, friction in their home. The enemy has brought friction in their life, and right now they're separated, and it breaks my heart because friction has come. And friction will come, friend, but we have to be joyful in hope when friction comes. 
Lord, why is there friction in my spirit? Why is there friction in my emotion? Why is there friction in me, God? I don't know, but be joyful in hope. Be patient in the affliction. I know a lot of us aren't very patient. We, get, we mock the microwave. Come on, somebody. We pace back and forth at that 30 seconds like it's an eternity. And you know, you're standing there at the microwave and you're just debating, I don't need these last 12 seconds. Come on, I did that this week. Oh, wait, got to nine. I can, oh, I can shut it off now. Man, what is it? Nine seconds. And it gets to five. All right, I'll just pull the door at five. My God, I can't wait anymore. And I just said, no, God, I'm going to be a martyr. I'm going to be a saint. And then I waited till it went beep, beep, beep. Before I opened the door and I felt so good. I got a breakthrough. <laughs> I'm a patient man. Fighting my microwave. My God. Patient in affliction. Oh, where's God? Where are you, God? Where are you, Lord, in my suffering? Where are you, God? Hang on. Hang on. He has not forgotten you. He knows where you are. Job said, He knows the way that I take. David said, My times are in your hands, oh God. Meaning, God, you got this. And be faithful in prayer. See, lots of times we get so sidetracked by the friction, we forget to pray. That's the most important thing you can do. Cry out to God in your affliction. Cry out to Him when there's friction in your life. It is then that God will hear your cry and He will answer you. But we don't cry out. We murmur. Our prayers are, God, help me. Our prayers are, where are you? What have you done to me? Why did you put me in this place? That's not a prayer. Hello? That's a complaint. And the last time I checked, God isn't very excited about murmurers and complainers. In one day, he killed 23,000 of those kind of folks. Yikes. A complaint is not a prayer, and a prayer is not a complaint. Ask somebody to hear your prayer, what you're praying, and let them know. They'll probably tell you, man, I wouldn't be praying like that. That sounds like you're, sure, you're, you're, you're cutting God short. You're, you're complaining. You're murmuring. God doesn't appreciate murmuring. He wants prayers, prayers of faith. God responds to faith, not to your, not to your complaints. He doesn't respond to that. He doesn't hear you murmuring. He hears your faith. God responds to faith. So, so pray a prayer in faith. Be faithful in prayer, and you'll see a difference. I guarantee you, you'll see a difference. Proverbs 27, 17 says, As iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. Wow. You know what that means? That metal on metal with that iron. It's, God's not trying to dull you. He's trying to sharpen you. Abraham Lincoln said, if they asked me to chop down a tree, he said, I'd spend the first, in, in six hours, he said, I'd spend the first six hours sharpening my axe. Because a sharper axe means less work. A dull axe means you're laboring in vain. And sadly, many believers are laboring in vain because they don't have a sharp axe. They had not allowed God to sharpen them through the friction. But I'm telling you, God wants to sharpen you, my friend. He wants to sharpen your skills. You know what God wants to sharpen? He wants to sharpen your ability to hear the Spirit of God. You know what happens to me when I'm in friction? You know what happens to me? I learn to hear God's voice better. Because I need Him to talk to me. I need to hear Him. And I begin to cry out, God, I need to hear your voice. I'm desperate for you to talk to me. And as I get quiet, He does exactly that. He's sharpening my sense of hearing in the Spirit. He's sharpening my sense of faith in the midst of friction. God wants to sharpen you. He's trying to sharpen your skills. You don't get sharp in your faith by watching SpongeBob on the couch. Mm. We, we, we think it just works like osmosis, like we want to do whatever we want to do. 
and we get stronger in our faith. You know, that's why we get stronger through friction because we don't choose the path of friction. We're like deer that just find the least resistant path. Woo, I just want to sail through life, Lord. Isn't it good? But then all of a sudden when we hit friction, we think, my God, what happened? What happened to my path? God's trying to teach you something, friend. He's sharpening you. He's sharpening your passion. You know, let me give you this illustration. We know the story uh, of, of the, the Good Samaritan. But here, here it is. There's a man that's just been beaten and mugged, and he's laying on the side of the road bleeding to death. And the people who are supposed to respond, this is the word of God. In the book of Luke, it says the ones who you thought would respond, the priest and the Levite, who are the people that God has chosen to teach spiritual things to his people, they ignored the man. They didn't even look over. They absolutely ignored. They walked away from him on purpose. Now, how many times is that happening in the church where we see what we're supposed to do, but we ignore it? And we wash our little filthy hands and we say, I don't want anything to do with that because I'm trying to, I'm trying to live my life. And God is showing you an opportunity to be his hand extended, to be the church, to do what he's called you to do. And you walk away from God. Because we don't want that friction. That's not my responsibility. I didn't beat him up. I didn't rob him. Yeah, but you just robbed yourself of an opportunity. And who was it? The no-name Samaritan, the one that was not supposed to. What's God trying to tell us? It's the guy that's not the Levite. He's not the, he's not the priest. He's not the preacher. He's not the evangelist. He's not the FCA director. He's just a guy. He's a despised guy, as a matter of fact. He, 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 it's a black guy on the road, and he's the white guy. It's a Hispanic guy on the road, and he's a black guy. It's, the, it's, it's what we don't think about. That's what it is, and that's what God said. That's the one that will probably help him out. My guess is this, friend, that somewhere in this man's life that took care of that guy, somewhere in his life there was friction. Somewhere somebody bent down one day and picked him up. Someday, somewhere in his life, somebody helped him through a tough day, helped him through a trial, helped him put his marriage back together again, and he did not forget it. And when the church doesn't want to do it, God will find somebody who does. And it might be somebody that God touched when he was a little boy, but that man went over with his own money, with his own donkey, with his own time, with his own compassion, and with his own wine and oil. Help that man back to life. My God, where was the church? We were dull. We couldn't hear God. Our sense of hearing was dull. Our sense of compassion was dull. Our sense of purpose was dull. We just want to get by. My God, I got problems of my own. What a little friction will do. See, what a little friction will do is it will make you remember that God stooped down and touched your life. And he cared for you when nobody else cared. And he saw you in the miry clay and he pulled you out of that miry clay and put your feet on a rock. And God lifted you out of the scum. He lifted you out of the oppression. He lifted you out of the darkness and he gave you a new name and he, and he put light all around you and he clothed you and he put his hand on you and he blessed you and he ordained you to have life. And we walk by because we're so lazy. We walk by because it's all about me. We walk by because we haven't faced the friction long enough to remember what God did for us. See, that's the picture. That's the picture of what I'm talking about. Iron sharpens iron. Yeah, it hurts. But at the end of that friction, you are sharp. At the end of that affliction in your life, you are a keener person. You hear God better. Why is it that you think Mother Teresa had so much compassion? Do you think it was because she was so wealthy? No. You think it's because she had gifts coming out of her? Oh, she's just a little old shriveled up lady. 
what I believe is because she faced a lot of friction in her life. And she understood something about friction. She understood something that it only lasts for a while and it only makes you sharper. And she realized that Samaritan was her and that if I help people, God will take care of me. Mm. Somewhere, because we've not faced friction, we've forgotten what it means. God brings men into deep waters not to drown them, but to cleanse them. Some of you are in deep water this morning. You know what? You're not going to drown. Because God said if you walk through the water, you're not going to drown. And if you walk through the fire, you won't be burned. But you know what you got to do? You got to get through the fire. So you can tell people who are in the fire, I found a way out. His name is Jesus. I found a way out. I found out that if I trust God through that friction, he will see me through. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about the hardships we suffered in the province of Asia. We were under great pressure far beyond our ability to endure. Have you been there? So that we despaired even of life. Indeed, our hearts, in our hearts, we felt the sentence of death. It was over. Do you get the picture? Paul saying, we came to the very end of it all. Everything that we had lived for, we are now about to die for. And he found out, ah, but this happened. There's a purpose that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. How do you know what it's like to be raised from the dead if you haven't been in the clutches of death yet? How do you know what it's like to be a new creation when you haven't, the old hasn't died yet? You have to know, my friend, through the friction God allows you to face. As is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, a voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. Now, see, this is the great God that we serve because all of the friction we deal with in our lives, all of the things that rub us the wrong way, all the stuff that we encounter, God knows about it and he does something about it. Every valley shall be filled in. Anybody ever been in a valley before? Come on, somebody. Anybody in a valley right now? Yeah, you go through the valley, don't you? You walk in the valley some days and it doesn't feel good. You feel like you're the only one in the valley. It's a lonely place. It's a dark place. But I'm here to tell you, every valley shall be filled in. Somebody say amen. He said, every mountain and hill will be made low. Every time you looked ahead and saw my God, not only can I not take another step, I can't climb that mountain. I can't go another step, God. It's too big. The Goliath is too tall. The walls are too wide. The journey is too far, God. But he said, every valley shall be filled in and every mountain made low. Hallelujah. He said, the crooked roads shall become straight. Ever been on a road before where you didn't know where you were going? Come on, somebody. Lord, where am I going? What are you doing? What's happening in my life? Where am I headed, God? Where are you leading me? Every crooked road will be straight and the rough ways smooth. Somebody ought to shout. Hallelujah! Every rough place in your life, he's going to smooth it out. He's going to make every difficulty in your life make sense someday. Glory to God. Everything that you thought you couldn't do, he's going to do for you. Hallelujah. Because he's a merciful God. I want you to stand with me. Woo, hallelujah. I want you to look at me for just a second. Now, now listen, this is very important this morning. There are some of you this morning that because of a past friction in your life that you didn't respond well to. 
today you're dealing with some things you're dealing with today. Not because of the friction you're facing today. The friction you're facing today is because you failed to respond correctly to the friction in your past. And the only way to ever address the friction you're facing today is to deal with the friction you failed to deal with in the past. See, that's why you've been in the cycle. Listen, this is extremely important. I'm trying to help some of you. Some of you just, you, you're trying, but you haven't come to the place where you don't realize yet you don't have to try. God does it all. But because of a, a friction you failed to address properly, that you just allowed the enemy to, to have his way. And in that, because of that, now you have different friction today. But you're not going to ever deal with the friction you're facing today until you deal with the one you failed to deal with in the past. You've got to deal with that first. A root's got to come out of the ground for you this morning. You can't break the weed off at ground level and expect things to go away. Yeah, it'll be gone for a little while, and you've been there. You know you have. You know you have. You know you broke the weed off, and you said, well, it's gone. But you know what? Just a few weeks later, there it was again. You said, my God, it came back. It's going to come back every time because you haven't dealt with the root. Listen to me. This is important for you. If you'll let God take that root out of the ground, that friction is over. It's not going to bombard you. It's not going to hold you back. See, that's how the enemy works, church. Do you know that all over this nation there are people that, that used to serve God that are sitting in their armchairs today and in their, in their beds and outside on the lake and doing whatever they want? They're not in the house of God because the enemy stopped their forward movement. He put enough friction. See, it, they don't have kinetic friction. They have static friction. The static friction finally caused them to stop moving. They stopped. They froze up. I know churches in this city. In the 13 years I've lived here, I've watched churches close. They're shut down. They don't operate anymore. Nobody goes there. Because static friction said you're not going anywhere. Hear me today. It's in your life. And the enemy's all but got you to stop. And you're running on reserves today because there's a, a friction in the past that you failed to deal with. And the best you can do today is survive. God's not interested in you surviving. He wants you to be revived. He wants you to be on fire. He wants you to be taking ground. He doesn't want you just to show up for church. He wants you taking the city for Christ. But we can't get past it because it's a cycle. We broke off the weed, but we didn't get the root out. Once you get that root out, friend, you're not dealing with that anymore. You've overcome that. You've gone beyond that. You're moving on. But the enemy knows how to keep you at bay. He knows how to hold people and churches back. And I'm telling you, this is the truth this morning. If you let God pull that root out of your spirit, you're, you're going on, man. You're taking ground. You're going to take ground. You're going to begin to now understand what the kinetic friction is. And that's the kind that it comes against you, but it never stops you. It's not strong enough to stop you. It only makes you go further and stronger. Hallelujah. So let's bow our heads for a moment this morning. Listen, friend. Life Church is a loving church. This church has no intention of embarrassing anyone. We are all about you advancing and moving forward. We're all about you taking ground. We're all about you growing from strength to strength, faith to faith, and glory to glory. And in order to do that, sometimes we have to deal with some tough things. But here at Live Church, it's a church of love. And we want to love you enough to help you because we want to believe that you're moving forward. Your family's moving forward. Your marriage is moving forward. Your finances are moving forward. Your children are moving forward. We're believing that. You're blessed. You're blessed of God. Hallelujah. But friend, let's just deal with some of these root issues today. As I spoke that a moment ago, some of you identified the Holy Spirit connected you to that. He said, that's you. Eyes are closed, heads are bowed. The Holy Spirit spoke and said, you know what? He reminded you of a root that you've got that needs to come out. And if that's you this morning, eyes are closed and heads are bowed, I want to see your hand. Raise it up real high. Thank you, thank you. Come on, come on, come on. Thank you, thank you. All right, put your hands down. And here's what I want to do. This is real simple. This is real simple. We're going to take those things and that root's coming out today because you're going forward. You're advancing, friend. You're going to take ground. We believe in you. 
We believe God has a great plan for your life that includes you having freedom from that. And there are others of you here this morning that you're dealing with some friction in your life right now. You're dealing with some right now that can potentially become a root, but you're fighting it right now and you're facing it and you're praying it through and you're seeking God. You're trying to be patient in affliction, but that, that, that friction is wearing on you. I want you to come too. That friction is really, it's really fighting you today. It's really, you're, you're, you're battling a friction in your life. You say, God, I don't know why this is here. I don't know where it came from, but I'm going to trust you through it. Hallelujah. I want you to come too in just a moment because I want to pray with you. I want to believe God to take these things and demolish these strongholds. 2 Corinthians 10, 4, say God wants to smash all of our strongholds and everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, he wants to set us free from that. Because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty unto God. Hallelujah. Pastor Travis, lead us. Hallelujah. Come on. If that's you this morning and you raise your hand, or if you're going through a particular friction right now, I want you to join me here right now at this altar. Come on. We're going to pray through. We're going to gather together and smash that thing in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Come on. Hallelujah.